Hello everyone, thank you for uh, joining us uh, today. Our topic for today is uh, meet uh, the latest cloud slang. It will be presented uh, by um, Chai from our R&D team. Uh, before we start, uh, if you have questions uh, during the presentation, you can use uh, the chat or the uh, questions tab. You can find it on uh, the left side of the screen. At the end of the presentation, we'll have time for questions and you will be able to use your microphone to ask um, high uh, direct questions. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you, Gal. Now I will proceed with my uh, presentation sharing. So, as Gal said, we have Klaus Lang as uh, orchestration, as orchestration tool. And uh, we would like to reach certain uh, uh, topics on our today's agenda. We would like to answer uh, to a question, a question, do we need orchestration? Also to do a short uh, recap on uh, Klaus Lang. What is Klaus Lang? How do we interact uh, with uh, Klaus Lang? And of course, a few things about uh, the Klaus Lang architecture and ecosystem. Uh, most of them was uh, were uh, present uh, previously. After that, uh, we would like to present what's new. We have some uh, Docker images with certain uh, capabilities. And of course, we have uh, a support uh, to use in Atom uh, free ID offer from uh, GitHub, our Klaus Lang language extension package with auto completion capabilities, text highlighting and so on to help us out in our authoring experience. I would like to iterate and uh, emphasize uh, some arguments why should uh, use uh, Cloud Slang. Of course, we have a demo section. I would like to use Atom IDE to create a flow from scratch. We will see when we reach that point. We will retrieve a operations orchestration central version that it's up and running to a certain virtual machine. And of course, uh, I will uh, like to present also our uh, new content related to VMware virtualization integration. Uh, flow that can be found in uh, samples, uh, virtual machine lifecycle. Of course, uh, we would like also to remind you all to help with our uh, Cloudslang project to spread the word or even contribute to our repositories. And uh, the last will be a part dedicated to answering uh, questions. So we will proceed, sorry about that. We will proceed with uh, our first uh, topic on our agenda. We will try to answer to a question, do we need uh, orchestration? We all know uh, often we bump into uh, needs regarding uh, either provisioning or, uh, I don't know, remediation, request fulfillment, health check scenarios, or so, or even deploy uh, certain uh, uh, workflows on uh, specific environments. So. Because of that, automatization of uh, DevOps processes becomes really quick, uh, good way to make our daily work more efficient. Uh, what we have, of course, everybody knows, we have operations orchestration, which is an enterprise uh, solution that offers a great uh, authoring experience in a graphical manner but also 
for DevOps community, the trend uh, towards open source is continuously growing. And uh, we know many of them prefers to work with CLIs. So Klaus Slang uh, tries to respond to that all. Uh, what is uh, Klaus Slang? Is an open uh, source command line interface orchestrator uh, that use ready made content to automatize daily DevOps processes. Of course, it's also an alternative to the enterprise solution. It offers textual authoring alternative to the graphical editing of uh, operations orchestration. But not to forget, Klauslang also use operations orchestration engine, which is called SCORE. And the Klauslang is also included in operations orchestration. That means you can run Klauslang flows into operation orchestration. Now I would like to perform a short recap on uh, Klauslang architecture and ecosystem. As I said before, we have the SCORE engine. That is the same engine that operations orchestration use. On top of it, uh, it's uh, Klaus Lang language constructed. Of course, we have also uh, on top of that two uh, separate layers. One of them is uh, CLI and the other is a builder. Of course, CLI interacts with our uh, content repository, the content that has uh, uh, several uh, plugin, plugin modules. Either there is a Java action or Python action on just flows that use our existing content. And the builder with, of course, uh, several functional tests and uh, integrated with our uh, build system and continuously integration of, of it. We also have several repositories. As you can see, one of the most important is Klausland content. Here we have our content. We have also score actions. Uh, it's a repository that contains all our uh, pluggable Java action. And we have also another repository, for example, a repository related to our uh, integration with, uh, with Atom. And we have score for engine and so on. OK, now I will move on to present what's new in Klauslang. First, I would like to remind you that now we have uh, available on uh, Docker Hub uh, those two images. One of them is um, lightweight version that contains uh, CLI with the content. And the other, of course, is uh, a little bit heavier. Besides the CLI with content, we have also Java that is uh, uh, Python, Atom, Free ID, some uh, text editors like VIM. Of course, we have Git, we have SSH server installed, and uh, our uh, latest Klauslang content. And the second on uh, this section, on what's new, I would like to uh, remind you that now, we have a Cloudslam package extension that is integrated with uh, GitHub Atom IDE, which is a free ID solution. And by installing this um, extension package, we will have access to a certain capabilities like uh, auto completion, uh, text highlighting, and, uh, and so on. When we reach the demo section, I will perform, uh, I will create from scratch using this uh, Atom uh, IDE, a flow that will uh, retrieve a central version. And I will use uh, step by step this uh, IDE to uh, show you, to illustrate how to, how to use it and how to use all the capabilities from that uh, extension package. 
if you have questions until uh, at this point. If there are not questions, I will uh, proceed further. I would like to uh, also present uh, different flavors of uh, Klaus Lang. The content uh, repository is it's organized in uh, operations and uh, flows. And the uh, important thing, which is actually an advantage, uh, those operations can be actually uh, Java actions that can be plugged in or Python actions or when it comes uh, to the flows, the flow actually can reuse the existing content to do some uh, logic, of course. Uh, now I will uh, give an example how it look uh, a Java action and you can see uh, the fact that uh, the Java is actually triggered uh, in this manner. Okay, now, now I will show you how a Python action looks like. It's also a pluggable module as a Java action. And of course the flows with uh, workflow and uh, sequential steps each step can be either a Java action or a Python action or a flow itself. So the point that I show you all of that is because uh, it's really an advantage. Um, Klaus Lang actually can be used on top of other, uh, I don't know, integrations and so on because uh, we can make at any time a certain flow with uh, complex logic organized as uh, sequential steps and uh, every step can be either a Java action or flow or Python action. Also as uh, advantage we have a good structuring every single step it's very clear presented and it uses the capabilities of a, a yaml which is a very human uh, friendly and very uh, easy to use besides that we have also an advanced flow control capabilities for example as it show in here as the outcome of a step in the certain workflow we can go, if uh, we came with uh, success, we go, uh, we can choose to go on uh, another step to execute another, uh, another uh, process. Or if it fails, we can fail with a certain failure label, with a meaningful label. Also, we have uh, data passing capabilities uh, as uh, you can see here it's illustrated uh, uh, we can use several types of uh, values for inputs we can pass it as a string or we can pass it as integer we can pass it as boolean or uh, we can use also the result of a python expression a python evaluation as you can see in this line for host, it's a logic expression and host we will receive as a value result of uh, this expression. Besides that, I would like to remind you that the fact we can use Klaus Lang because Klaus Lang is agentless. We don't need to do any prerequisite steps beside, uh, before we use it. And we have also parallel capabilities. For example, if we use this for iteration for loop on every single loop, as you can see here, those steps are executed. So we can say we have the parallel capabilities in a certain execution logic. 
And of course, last but not least, why we should use Clauslang, because we have already a several integrations, valuable, valuable integrations like Amazon Web Services, VMware, Red Hat, OpenShift, OpenStack, Heroku, and so on. Okay. If someone has some questions until this point. If there are any question, I will move forward to a demo section. Now I will, I would like to illustrate how to use, uh, the Atom IDE to actually create from scratch a flow to retrieve an operational orchestration central version. And for that, I will open the Atom. First of all, I would like to show you this setting area. This setting area can be found under the file tab, settings, right? And on this tab, packages, we'll find this language class lang extension package. Uh, as I said, uh, with this package install, we will have access to a certain capabilities related to auto completion and uh, text highlighting. To proceed with my demo, I will open a new file, which is untitled. I choose to save this file with a certain extension. I will choose to save it under the operations orchestration sample. Right, and I save it as demo file with SL extension. So we have this demo file with SL extension. Please be aware of the fact that now appears the association with class length files. So if I type here flow, for example, with uh, auto completion capabilities and enter, I will have a basic structure of the flow. As I said, I would like to perform a REST API call, a GET call to retrieve a operations orchestration central version. So I will need a certain helps from another content that already exists. I will use this HTTP client get. I will show you just to know that we will need the URL and of course the content type and a certain headers to perform this API call request. And we shall see if we need anything else. Now I will proceed with completion of the namespace that is IO cloud slang operation operations orchestration. As you can see, I have this auto completion ability and samples, right? I will choose here a labor as an alias. Let's say that it's rest. And of course, I will associate a certain namespace with this label that is IO cloud slang base network and rest. Under this namespace, I will find this HTTP client get, right? IO Clouslink Base Network REST. Okay. I will pass as a flow name, the same name as is in the file, which is demo file. And I will start to uh, fill up the inputs that we need. Host which is a required one. Protocol. It can be 
require false. So it's possible not to be specified by user. Because of the ML, I have to be more careful with uh, indentation. Require false, but we should supply a default value, which will be default as a string. And HTTP. In the same way, I will choose to also put in here port. Also, I have to be careful to the indentation. Port I will choose to uh, also let uh, to be uh, require false not to be specified by user if it choose so, but I will provide the default value which is 8080. So username, password. but also as non-required inputs. And I will pro pro provide a, a default value as empty string. Okay, now I finish the inputs area. I will give a meaningful name to the step name, uh, REST API call. And under the do, I will use my REST label and from there get HTTP Sorry, HTTP client get. As you can see, I have all the benefits that came from autocomplete capability. As I said, the get will need the URL input, the header input, and the content type because uh, those inputs are needed in, to perform a correct REST API call, so it's URL. Here I will choose to pass a value to this URL using an expression, and I will form my URL that is made by protocol plus a certain fixed part colon and forward leaning slashes plus host plus also came a fixed part which is a colon after that I just see that I have some typos right okay so I have protocol, host, port, and of course, a certain URI as a fixed part, which is O, rest, and version. Besides that, I will give also the content type, which is application slash json and of course headers and i need the authorization header as basic one and on the publish section uh, i will choose to publish the return result 
also the return code. Of course, it's meaningful to know the status code. And if it is some error, error messages, right? I will get rid of the navigate section because I don't have uh, other steps, just this step, right? I will put also on the outputs all of this to see it in the CLI outcome of the execution. And I will get rid of result section because, of course, we cannot have anything but either success or failure. Now I will save the file and, of course, I will pass to the CLI this command. This command tells me to run the file that has a certain path with a certain name. Of course, the name is demo sl file with a certain class path and of course with the input we have only the host input i will copy this and pass it to the cli the cli is 0950 which is our latest latest uh, release version Okay, it seems that I have some problems. I forgot something that is happening when you perform a, a live demo. Yes, it seems that I type it something. So we have protocol, fixed part, host, also here, it's plus. Port. Okay. Save again the file. And I will try now to run it again. So you can see as a result, we have a certain version, a certain JSON as a response with a certain uh, operation orchestration central version. Now, uh, I would like to say that uh, this HTTP client get, it has uh, a Java action that is triggered. It's a HTTP client write as a, a Java action. And now with this flow, if we like to uh, enhance it a little bit to retrieve as a separate uh, separate output, we will add another step in the flow, uh, but this time the step will use a Python script action that is also ready-made in our content. Is this get value that came from IO class lang base JSON? As you can see, it's a Python script. So in my demo file, this time I will need a navigate. And if I have success, I will mention the name of the second step. And if I have failure, I will give a meaningful uh, failure label here. For example, REST API, API call failure. And because of that, I will need also the result. And here I will put success. And of course, this REST API call. Okay. And now I will uh, choose to add a second uh, step in this flow. Let's give a meaningful name, get 
central and get O central version, for example. Just do. And this time I will need also to import uh, pre existing content. I will choose, for example, JSON as a label and a certain namespace, which is this namespace, IO class length base JSON. All right. So here I said do on JSON get value, right? And in this step on the get value, I will need this input, JSON input. JSON input is actually our response from the previous step. So I will put the return result in here. And also I have this JSON path. And the JSON path I will give as a list uh, version, version. So under version key, I will retrieve a version value from the response, right? Okay. Publish. Uh, I will publish central as central version. The outcome of this step, that is value. It's called value. As you can see, it's a, a value, right? So we used this value as the outcome of this step. And of course, I will choose also to navigate. Sorry about that. It's navigate. Success. And failure. And if we have success, we will go to success of the flow. Or if we have failure, we will give a meaningful label for this failure. Get central version failure. OK. And I forget to bind those two steps. Now. It's bounded, and of course, I will put this. So now we have our flow. As you can see, I made those, uh, this flow from scratch using two steps in the workflow. One of the steps that triggers a Java at action uh, pluggable. And the second step that uses a Python uh, script action. I will run again the flow. And we shall result at the demo file. It's illegal. It seems that I have here a typo. Okay. Now everything goes okay, but of course I forget also to add as an output the central version. Okay, I will save it again. And now our flow should behave as we expected. As you can see, we have this central version as a 
output, independent output of the flow. So uh, this is a conclusion for a first uh, demo. As you can see, now we can measure actually the time to value, how we can use Cloud Slang to build from scratch a flow that use two steps. One of the step use a pluggable Java action and the other use a Python script pluggable action. Okay. If audience has some questions till this point. We had the two questions in one in the uh, question yes. sub and one sure. in the chat. Okay. Uh, yes. <clears throat> At this point, Cloudslang does not uh, support encryption, but you can choose to pass all the values from a flow using a certain input file. And of course, when you run the flow, you does you don't have to to show uh, the sensitive data that uh, contain that are contained in the uh, input file but for now we cannot uh, we don't support uh, encryption but it's a, a thing that uh, it's in uh, actual uh, development iteration process so uh, what i can say about this is the fact that in our uh, coming uh, releases we will have also the encryption capabilities i hope to answer on this one okay yes i saw the typo okay there are other questions i don't see it on the left, uh, okay. on the question tab. Yeah, okay. Does Cloudslang leverage all the same integration available in Studio or are they separate? Of course, we try to leverage all the integration, but we cannot compete at this point with operations orchestration. Operations orchestration has, I don't know, several thousand flows and operations, so on. But as you already seen, we have some uh, pretty meaningful integrations like VMware, which I am about to perform a short demo on it. And also, let's say Amazon, OpenStack. So uh, yes, in our roadmap, we will uh, also provide the Azure, Microsoft Azure. So for a cloud area, we should cover all let's say the most important uh, the most important integrations and of course uh, we will hope also that our content uh, to be to to grow fast because of the contributions and the contributors also we have uh, in OpenStack, for example half of the integration is made by our uh, contributors How would filters on the outputs be done? Filters, um, yes, uh, to, to cover this one. We also develop uh, right now um, an advanced capabilities uh, on Navigate, for example. And with those advanced capabilities, we will uh, support some filter on the outputs. But, uh, if you like to to go further with uh, those filters we c you can actually uh, uh, apply a certain expression evaluation or uh, logic a python expression on the outputs if you like let's say to validate uh, the outcome of a certain step is really successful uh, you should go uh, on success uh, if the status code, for example, it's 200 in our case, in our get API call. I hope I answer uh, uh, that question too.
Uh, what kind of support can we or a customer expect? Yes, as you all saw already, uh, we can support uh, Java and also Python as a action, a pluggable action. And of course, the flows on top of them to reuse it in a certain logic. Uh, I don't know. In a future, in our future uh, uh, roadmap, I know there are discussions related to JavaScript. I hope I answered that question too. Of course, there are questions that uh, require uh, more complex answers and related to a certain status of a flow that is running and so on. I uh, will address all the questions later on. Thank you all for, for understanding on this. Sure, the answer is more complex. Not that easy. I have to describe uh, certain concepts and after that I will respond to them. Of course, uh, now I will move on with, uh, with uh, demo. Right. As you saw, I uh, just performed this demo, create from scratch a flow that retrieves our central version. And now I would like to uh, do another short demo related to our uh, latest content, VMware lifecycle. You can find uh, this VMware integration under the virtualization folder. Is uh, It has the same hierarchy as the base folder, for example. And you can find under the virtualization um, sample folder. And uh, we have their uh, VMware uh, lifecycle. So, in order to perform uh, this demo, I also open it with uh, with Atom. We have virtual machine lifecycle.sl. Uh, as you can see in this uh, description, uh, th there are a statement that says we need the prerequisite steps. In order to run this, we will uh, require to get this VIM25 jar. Uh, the VIM25 jar is a jar that is a property of uh, VMware and we cannot uh, redistribute it. But any one of you can go at this uh, web and uh, perform a registration. And after that, you can download all the SDK. And the SDK will contain this VM25 jar. Of course, you have to search it and just copy it into a location that you previously downloaded and unzip it our uh, CLI with content. Uh, under my uh, local machine, under the 0950 folder, I have Syslang. And of course, under the lib, I will find the VIM25 jar. Okay. Now I will perform this command. I will pass this command to the CLI. This command helps out with those two input files, as you can see in here. We have this lifecycle input YAML, and we have also Another file, as I said before, answering to a certain question, we have a second input file that contains all the sensitive data that I don't want to show you. But of course, let's open the first input file. As you can see here, we have some specific uh, inputs, specific VMware data center inputs. We have uh, the URL of the data center name of the data center. We choose a certain host within a data center cluster. We name our machine, let's say, demo VM1 to be demo VM1. I save 
the file. We choose a data store uh, to use it when we attach a hard disk for, of this machine. We prepare this machine to be an Ubuntu 64 bits guest. We pass a certain description. We choose to have two CPUs with this amount of uh, disk size, with this amount of memory size. On the update step, we will choose to add a disk. So the update actually will be adding a disk to this virtual machine. I specified here which kind of disk, and I will use uh, those inputs to send some mails to inform us about the status of the running flow. So I will um, explain a little bit uh, what the flow does. I will collapse it to see better, right? I will retrieve all the operation system list from that host within the cluster. Uh, I, after that, I will create a virtual machine using uh, the guest operation system specified. I will list all the VMs that are in the data center and make sure in that list appear my virtual machine. After that, I will create a mail with the list of all virtual machines. I will get the disk number of the virtual machine, which I will expect to be one. I will apply an update on existing virtual machine to add another disk. I will get the details of the updated machine, also the disk number after update. I also send a mail regarding this. I will power on the machine. Of course, I make sure the machine is powered on. I send a mail email about that. I power off the machine because I cannot delete the machine if the machine is not powered off. And after that, I delete uh, the machine. I, or, uh, I get another uh, list of all VMs from the data center just to be sure that my virtual machine doesn't appear that anymore, right? With all that things said, I will pass the command. I will pass the command. So this is the command. I'll pass the command to the CLI. And sorry about that. Now I will go to the data center and choose the tasks tab. And here I have to see the task that create a virtual machine, update a virtual machine and so on. But to be sure, just let the create VM step two uh, complete with success. Of course, until then, I have this Gmail account and I receive here the messages. So I retrieve all the guest operating systems from that host. We should see that Ubuntu 64 guests, right? That we use is here. In inbox, of course, I create with success the demo VM1 machine. I will go straight to data center to saw it. VMs and templates tab. My demo VM1 machine that has an Ubuntu Linux 64 bits as a guest operation system descriptor with two CPUs with eight, eight gigabytes of uh, memory and with those two hard disks. First, it's on the created 
step and the second it's uh, an update step from update step let's see how the flow already got to the point that deletes the virtual machine of course now we have to see it all in uh, our inbox so as you can see on after the create virtual machine we have only one disk attached after a successful uh, update step now the number of disks are is two we successfully managed to power on the demo v1 vm1 machine after that we successfully powered off the demo vm1 vm1 machine and of course with we deleted with success uh, this machine let's see if we can find our machine no, we cannot find it's just one match in the title. We cannot find anymore our demo VM one machine. Just to confirm that, I will go straight to the data center. I will choose a, uh, yet VMs and templates. It seems to have uh, some network issues. Let's wait a little bit to reload our uh, dashboard. Sorry about that. It seems that there are some uh, network issues. Okay, we will go into the VMs and templates. And of course, we cannot find anymore our demo VM1. So that concludes my uh, my uh, second uh, demo. If uh, we have some questions until this point, or maybe we, uh, I will address all the questions on the uh, last section on our uh, webinar. Of course, I would like to remind you all to help with our uh, CloudSlang project. You can help in two ways. First, you can spread the word about it and about what we try to do in this project. And the second, of course, you can contribute. It's uh, really easy to contribute. Just made a free account on GitHub, fork our content repository, do your stuff that you need in there, and of course, open a pull request in our uh, repository. All the pull requests, uh, we will uh, proceed a certain uh, scenario, uh, we will review it, and if everything is okay, we shall merge it on our master. And so, with our uh, effort, our uh, content repository will really go grow fast. We have here also uh, some useful links. Of course, it's a klauslang.io official website of our project. And of course, we have um, uh, Docker uh, Hub related uh, to, to CloudSlang and to images. We have also a useful link how to install and configure the Atom to benefit uh, from uh, the language CloudSlang extension uh, package and some uh, interesting use cases related to work with uh, DigitalOcean as a cloud provider, right? how to clean up your Docker environment using CloudSlang on a core OS cluster, and also how to create a complex cluster environment. You can find all of uh, that using those useful links. And now, of course, we reach the point that I will try to address all the questions that audience have. 
Okay. Mark said the upcoming update to the O220 course will have a full module lab on Klaus Slang. Right. I hope to be considered that. What about customization spec XML to configure static IP address? I know this question very well. Yes, we have the customized Linux guest. It's already merged on, uh, on master. I think we should uh, uh, sync offline to explain how to apply a static IP address on a certain uh, newly created virtual machine because uh, we need also mount uh, VMware tools on that machine and a certain uh, sleep time to accomplish that. I guess Michael put that question. What kind of support can we or customer expect? Um, no, this is the question that I said. Uh, it requires a more complex answer and to restate some uh, some uh, concepts to actually can respond to that. Right. Let's see if I have any other questions. No. If anybody wants to ask directly. Uh, I will uh, request the help for my um, colleague Gal to get all of those questions and uh, to be sure that I will try to answer to every single one. Gal, I guess that concludes. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, my webinar, yes. Okay, sorry. Um, so if you if we don't have any more questions, uh, then uh, thank you, Michal, for uh, this presentation. If you have additional questions, you can send it out uh, in email or, in, of course, in the Cloudflare community or even here now in the chat, and we will uh, address them later. And thank you um, for participating today. Bye-bye.